If you're struggling with fractions because you're confused, stuff doesn't make sense, this video is really going to help. This video is going to cover how to add and subtract both mixed numbers and improper fractions. Let's get started. Okay, so let's take it step by step. What is 3 plus 2? Yeah, easy, right? Are these mixed numbers or improper fractions? No, they're not, but they're easy to do, right? So let's do 3 plus 2. I'll write it like this so it's a little easier. 3 plus 2. Yeah, 5, right? Not hard. What is 3 and a half plus 2? Oh, just do it in your head. Just do it in your head. Yeah, if you have 3 and a half cookies and I give you two more, you have 5 and a half. So you just added a mixed number. You already know how to do this. Look, so if we were going to do 3, let's, let's make it a quarter now. Okay. So this is what we're going to focus on today, this guy right here. So the first thing we do is we add the whole numbers and we add the fractions and we do them step by step. So what's three plus two? Yeah, it's five. What's one quarter plus one quarter? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to make sure those denominators are the same and they are. So what's one plus one? It's two. And then you just carry the denominator. Okay, so we're going to break this down into step by step. All right, so this is the main idea of what we're going to cover first. Okay, so let's break it down. If I said one and a quarter plus two and two quarters, all right, so what is that? All right, so that looks like, can you draw me one and a quarter? Yeah, so you're going to draw something like this and then color it in. How much is one and a quarter? Well, one is you ate the whole thing. You were very hungry. And then a quarter is, well, you ate that much. Yeah. All right, two and a quarter. Can you draw me two and a quarter? Yeah, you can make uh, Hershey bars if you want instead. That, that works too. Oh, wait a second. There you go. Draw me two and a quarter. Yep. Remember, because it's got that four, you know that there are going to be four parts to each one. So you ate one of them, two of them, and then two quarters means one, two. All right. So let's add the pictures first. How many holes do you have here? One, two, three. How many bits? One, two, three. And the divisions are four, three and three quarters. Let's see if we get the same thing on the other side. One plus two is three. The bottoms are the same. You always have to check, always have to check. And most of the ones we're gonna do today are not gonna be the same because you guys are good at this now. All right, so these are the same. So we can just add one plus two is three and keep the number of divisions the same. You see how they're the same? Okay, so what do we do there? Do you notice how they don't match? They don't match. Does that have any effect on the whole numbers? Shake your head, no. Mm -mm. Doesn't have any effect. All right, so let's just deal with the fraction first because I know you know how to add one and two. Okay, so let's deal with this. Three eighths plus a quarter. So what's the common denominator here? So we dealt with this for the past couple of weeks. So you can review this if this is new <clears throat> by going back to a previous week. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to keep the top the same, one and three eighths, and we're going to bump this up, this quarter up, by multiplying the top and bottom by two. Okay, we're going to carry the whole number over, this two. One times two is two. Four times two is eight. Okay. Do you notice how they're the same now? Okay, good. That means you can put an eight down here. 3 plus 2 is 5, 1 plus 2 is 3, and that's it. 3 and 2 over 9 plus 1 and a third. And if this is easy, by the way, you should be racing me to the answer, okay? All right, so what am I going to, they, they're not, the, the denominators here are not the same, so let's convert them. 3, if I multiply this by 3 over 3, right, a clever form of 1, 3 times 3 is 9, so that will be the same as this one. So keep the top one the same. But the bottom one, remember we just carry the 1 over. All we're doing right now is working with this, this thing here. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we're just scaling up one third, so we can add them. All right, what do we get? Can you add that and tell me what we get? Okay, go ahead and put it, uh, go ahead and add it up and put it in the box. Did you get four and five ninths? If you did, yes. If you didn't, do you know why, how we get four and five ninths? Three plus one is four. Two plus three is that five right there. And then the nine, somebody's asking why, why we don't add the nine and made it 18. 
Um, so you probably want to go back to an earlier lesson. Um, but basically, these are divisions. So we're not adding the number of divisions. We didn't divide it more. Okay? We just said we had 2 out of 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this one had 3 out of 9. So we had 2 here and 3 here. How many do we have? 5. Yeah, exactly. Good, good, good. All right. Harder one, huh? Okay, how about this one? 6 and 7 eighths plus 2 and 3 eighths. Whoa, what are we going to do now? Are you seeing a problem yet? The eights are the same. Let's just add them up. All right, so here's 6 plus 2 is 8. 7 plus 3 is 10 over 8. Does anybody see a problem with that one? <laughs> we have an improper fraction here. Okay, good. Would you agree that this is the same number? What do you think? How did I do? Yeah, okay, so what did I do? All right, so notice there are, the, the top is bigger than the bottom. Okay, so that means, so let's just look at 10 over 8. Okay, 10 over 8 is the same as 8 over 8 plus 2 over 8. Would you agree? 10 is equal to 8 plus 2? Good. 8 over 8 is another way of saying 1 plus, and this is, oh, you can't see. There we go. And this is this guy. So I'm adding my 1 and I'm carrying it. So it, it's like the opposite of subtraction where we have to borrow. Now we have extra. And so we're going to add this, we're going to convert this and add part of this, which is 1, 8 out of 8 to bump up the 8 to 9. And then we have still a little left over. And then you can reduce this by dividing top and bottom by 4 to get 1 quarter. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, not 4. <gasps> You almost let me get away with that. There we go. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I have 9 and a quarter. All right, let's work with this idea a little bit more. Yeah, so what did we do? We added them up. We just added them up because they, they matched, right? That's a 7 up here. Okay, and then we got an improper fraction, and then we took the whole part out, the 1, and added it to the whole number just to kind of clean up the number. Clean up the number. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do another one like this. But uh, let's add a little twist to it, because we like twists and turns. Otherwise, life gets a little boring. Okay. All right. Let's do, somebody has said we haven't done subtraction yet. You're right. Let's do some subtraction. Okay. If I take away the whole number part, what does it mean if I have two-thirds of a cookie and you ate two-thirds of my cookie? What did you eat? All of it, right? So do you see how this the fraction part was going to become zero. You see that? So there's nothing left over here. And so this is zero over three. And this is three minus one is two. So we just call that two. When there's no fraction part left, just you don't even have to write this part. You just write the whole number. Yeah, it's because these are exactly the same fraction. OK. Let's, let's try it when we have something like this. 5 and 7 out of 8 minus 2 and a half. Okay, this is more like what you're going to see when you get to science and engineering classes. You're going to get this, whether you're working with chemistry and chemicals or force vectors and acceleration or bridges or something. They're going to look more like this. Okay, so how do we scale 1 half up so what matches the denominator up there? What do you want to do? Okay, how about we multiply the top and bottom by something so the bottom turns into an 8. Okay, 4 over 4, we'll do it. So this stays as 5 and 7 eighths. This one, I'm going to put the negative sign here, and I'm going to keep the 2. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so what do you see now? What do you get as an answer? Can you tell me? So you can do the fraction part first if you want. 7 minus 4 is how much? 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay, and then don't forget the 8. And then 5 minus 2. So we're just taking it in steps. So the first thing we did is we matched the denominators. Okay, and we did that here by scaling up the 1 half. And then you just do the fraction part and then the whole number part. It gets a little messy 
when you have to start borrowing. So let's, let's do one more example just to make sure this is good. Okay. What if there's no whole number? <laughs> what if there's nothing here? You have nine and nine tenths candy bars or something. Um, what do you guys like to eat? You could put it in the chat. Which, what should we be using? What's your favorite thing to eat? Yeah. Broccoli? Really? Somebody put broccoli. Okay, all right. You got nine and nine tenths broccoli. Carrots? Okay. Oh, you guys are super healthy. Look at this. Re oh, oh, here we go. Peanut butter cups. Okay, now we're getting... Uh, this is more what I was expecting. Bubble gum? I don't know that bubble gum counts as a food. Okay, so while you're typing that in... <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to scale the one half up. Would you agree? We're going to scale that up. So what are we going to scale it up to? Uh, the 10. So what, what do we need to multiply top and bottom to make that 2 turn into a 10? You guys are still telling me about food. Ooh, somebody likes smoothies. Yeah, I like smoothies too. Good. Times 5, good. All right, so 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. There we go. And then we just write this one on top, 9 and 9 over 10. Great. All right. You give me the final answer. Give me the final answer. There we go. Apple slices, pomegranates. Ooh, I'm coming to your house. Yum. Uh, let's see. Cheesecake. I have actually never really enjoyed cheesecake, and I know I probably just shocked about half of you there. Um, exactly. Good, good, good. Apples. More. A lot of apples. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, so what do we get? Nine and four tenths. Exactly. So the nine drops down because there's nothing here. So it's just nine. Nine minus five is four. You can reduce that to nine and we divide the top by two and the bottom by two. We get two fifths. Either one of these answers I would take and you would get 100%. Excellent. All right. Should we try some messy ones now? I know, I, I don't know about you, but in math class, it always bothered me. The teacher always did like the easy ones and then they gave the really hard ones for homework and there was like no bridge between them, right? So let, let's do some messy problems now. Should we do messy ones? Yeah, okay, so here we go. <laughs> here we go. Um, oh, I'm thinking of another story, but I, I need to stay on track or we're not gonna get through it all today. <laughs> okay, um, I'll tell you a, a funny story later. One, three and a quarter minus one and three quarters. Okay. Messy problem. Why is it messy? You tell me. Do you spot the problem? Do you spot the problem with the problem first? Sorry, that was really bad English and probably made no sense. Okay. Um, can I take three quarters away from one quarter? No. If I only have three quarter, if I only have a quarter available, and you say yes, but I want three, <laughs> um, it's it's not possible. So what we have to borrow the same way we borrow in subtraction anyway. So here, I'll do it in red. So this, I'm going to make a 2. And if I do that, does it make sense that I'm going to add 4 over 4 to this fraction? So I'm going to rewrite it so it's not quite so messy. So it's going to be 2, and I'm going to take one of these and add it to the 1 quarter. So that's going to be 5 over 4. And then I'm just going to rewrite this one, minus 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, stop and make sure this makes sense. Put a smile on your face so I know it kind of makes sense, so I know where, where you guys are at, okay? All I did was borrow one, and I just can't throw it out the window. I have to do something with it, so I'm going to add it to the one quarter to bump it up to make it bigger, just like when we borrow from the tens when we do our regular subtraction just with whole numbers. Okay, great. Okay, so 5 minus 3 is 2. Don't forget the 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. I can reduce this to 1 and a half. All right. Take a good look at that and tell me if you have questions. Tell me if you have questions, okay? Because I'm going to do another messy one. Dragon fruit. You guys are still giving me food. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me, let me do another one. Here, let's do one more, and then I'll tell you a, a, a short, really short, funny story. Because uh, I want to make sure we have time for our secret codes that I have in mind for you today. Okay. So I have one eighth, and I want to take away one half. Okay, so one eighth is like this. One half is like that, like an eighth of an inch, half an inch. So I want to take this much away from that, and it just doesn't work. So we're going to first bump this up so they're the same, and then we're going to borrow here. So we actually have, this is a two-step problem. So let's bump this up first. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to make uh, the common denominator is going to be eight. So this is going to be five and an eighth. Okay, minus two. Four times one is four. Two times four is eight. Okay, but you see we still have a problem. I'm trying to take one minus four. Okay, so that's not something we want to do. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to borrow. This is going to become a four. We're going to say this is plus eight over eight. Okay, so we're going to rewrite the problem again. So now instead of a five, it's a four. We took one away and we added it to the eighths. So we have nine eighths. It's okay for this to be an improper fraction for um, when we, we need it to, for the calculation inside. Okay, it's just for the final answer that you want to reduce it. Okay, so what do you get for a final answer? Can you tell me? What do you get for a final answer? You get a donut. Oh, I think you're still answering the food question. <laughs> okay, so again, we are just bar. The first thing we did is we scaled this up so the denominators were the same. And then we can't take four eighths from one eighth. Like there isn't enough. We can't take four from one. I have one cookie, but you want four. So what we do is we borrow here, take the one. This is eight over eight is one. And that's where it shows up. So we reduce the whole number by one. So that becomes a four. And then we add that one here as a fraction to get an improper fraction. So we have four and eight plus one is nine over eight. Good. All right, I see lots of answers coming in. Did you get this? Did you get that two and five eighths? Yay! All right, if something doesn't make sense, you're asking me questions now. Okay, so I'll leave that up just for a second. How do you feel about fractions now? A little bit better. <laughs> so if this made sense and you like this type of learning, this is an excerpt from just a small little sample from my math program. So this math program covers fractions, decimals, percent, geometry, pre-algebra and algebra, as well as statistics and probability. So it takes students from about fourth grade all the way up through eighth grade so they are ready for high school math. In fact, they're more than ready. If you'd like to learn more about my program, it's at superchargedmath.com. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can reach me at my personal email, which is aurora at superchargedscience.com, and I will see you in class.